spikes at like it spikes at like 180, 190 at times. And like sometimes when I run, like I usually like push 170, 180 when I'm running. And like we went on, we we went to that thing about what is a good heart rate. It's like what the hell, you know? You know what I mean? Elizabeth, thank you for your input there. Um. <laughs> I didn't hear any coughing. What kind of I excuse is that? I went you on mute? Me. Trust me, y'all don't want to hear me cough. I, long story short, I'm allergic to my new apartment. Um, no! And I'm, like, very afraid I'm going to get bronchitis. That's just because I'm super paranoid. Um, but I've had very bad allergies, and I've been coughing a lot. Is it the carpet? Is it mold? Is it, like, dust? Is there cat? Were there cats there? Do you have a cat allergy? I, I think that the previous resident had a cat. I've been vacuuming and pulling a lot of dust and cat hair out of the carpet. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, I've heard about that happening to people. Do you have a cat allergy to the dander or whatever? Yeah, yeah. I do. Welcome Dang, to the club. I, I, I immediately guessed it. Dang. Yeah, so I'm currently carpet cleaning with one of my friends. Um, so hoping for the best with Maybe that. you should get a Roomba. Maybe I should get a Roomba, honestly. Got like all terrain in here. Have like the fake wood floors in like the kitchen, and then like, yeah. carpet in the living room and the bedroom. So I like the synthetic hardwood floors. That's what my apartment has, and it's a, we uh, it's better than carpet for sure. Yeah, I I wish it was like all in the living room too. I think that would have been really nice, but that's not bad. That's a nice new apartment getting settled in. So yeah, no, the best. Support. I think the, a really good setup is uh, just get a full like hardwood floor apartment. Buy the buy an area rug if you really want for like your living room, or and then like another one for your kitchen, just for shits. And yeah, you're just, you're basically set for for the rest of your lease. You know what I also really like in the kitchen, like the anti fatigue mats. But like yeah, I think those- that's what I. Would. Like Explain that. Things. Explain that. Know. What is an anti-fatigue mat? It's just like a cushiony mat, but it makes standing so much better. Oh. Interesting. So if you had to, like, stand all day at a stove, then okay. Okay. I, I, could, I could deal with that. Yeah, we have some of them in, like, a lab where I work. And it's really nice if you're, like, working on a specific area and you can stand on the mat. So, Is it is it anti-static? Uh, I don't know. They might be. I work mostly with, like, high temperatures, so we're, like, less worried about electrical. Um, okay. But, yeah. But how are you guys doing? Catch me up. It's so nice to see you. Or hear you. This is the experience package of me and someone else. <laughs> that is the coldest cold opening I've ever done. I didn't yeah. want to interrupt, uh, you know, wrong talk here. Uh, real hot take. People are going to be like immediately click off when they hear me talking about carpet cleaning. What people? I don't know about that. <laughs> you assume any clicks on these videos? <laughs> we have these weird spikes where we'll get a bunch of people like on YouTube or on the podcast. I don't know. If people are sharing it, but there are real spikes for some of so I I can't disclose that information. It's it's private nah, information. I it's proprietary. Myself, but uh, don't you make money off of this too on like Anchor? We used to, but, uh, but that was before uh, Spotify bought Anchor. You know, because of a uh, big business. Now they now they don't let us do ads anymore. Well, that sucks. Except I mean, they the would. That were below, Spotify is supposed to like. Advertise, advertise on your con like in your listening like every like fifteen minutes or so if you have the free version. We're or below every- the threshold for ads. I'll say. Ah. Oh great! So it's got a it's got an 
a monetization policy based on subs or listens like YouTube does. Right. Yeah, it used to not be. It used to, and honestly, which 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 I the part that's ironic is we were above that threshold before, and now we're not. Once they changed over, so. Uh, but how? Well, also, we're it not doesn't helping even spread the word of the podcast. Also, it doesn't account for for your YouTube views too, right? No, it doesn't. That's the other thing. Yeah, YouTube does not count toward that. Those views. YouTube is just there for fun. I don't know. So people like listening. Like I said, some, we get these weird like spikes on YouTube, but. Um, yeah, those don't count toward our uh, monetization. They never have. Sure. We Unless you were monetizing on YouTube, in which case, uh, maybe. Yeah, but we're also below a threshold there. So we, we're kind of splitting the views is the problem, right? And we're getting none of it. If we had consolidated, but, you know, I understand people like listening to different... Also, uh, I've heard YouTube's monetization policy is absolute garbage, so you're probably not missing out. Yeah, uh, well... I get emails about like you should do advertise your podcast on here, and I'm like, I, this seems like a scam. So, you know. yeah, I haven't done anything with that. Anyway, yeah, go on. Answer Elizabeth's question from 20 minutes ago. She wants to hear and see about you guys. Yeah, no. Um, Virginia's treating me well. Uh, I still miss Atlanta. I was able to come back for career fair, and then before that, I was able to come for clean old fashioned eight. Which was a lot of fun. That's good. Yeah. I wish I could go back for career fair, but this past year I was close enough, but there were too many recruiters at my company Ah. for tech. And so I was like at like the bottom of the list because I was like the most junior. So I didn't get to go. And I have a feeling that they probably won't send me this year just because I'll be coming from the Northeast and it's much further away and much more expensive to send me. So. Yeah, oh, wow. makes sense. I, I mean, you know, for all I say that, like, airfare from, like, Dallas is, or, like, from D.C. is kind of over, overpriced. I mean, I still do a lot of travel. So, it is what it yeah. is. Yeah, my closest airport is the Albany, New York airport. What? And it's pretty small. Yeah, I moved to upstate New York. I live in New York now. Again, by the way, not Were you ever in the city? You're back. Huh? Were you ever in the city? New York City? I've visited the city, but I don't live. I live like two hours from the city. Two and a half. That's probably the... I mean, I remember we've been there... We went there once for, for the NIT. Fun trip. That was so... That was very fun. I hope I David Stubb gets us back there again. I was actually looking at those photos earlier today, funnily oh. enough. Of the NIT trip. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. Like, we were in MSG. If you guys want, I watched um, the women's basketball trip video that I made from, <gasps> when was it? It was no. six years ago. 2018, right? It was six years ago, yeah. Yeah, 18. The way I'm going to If you want a good right dose now. of, it's most, it's, yeah, go to my YouTube <laughs> channel. It's mostly Nadia and Ryan. So, if, uh, Do you, if that's are you thing. talking about, like, the actual trip video or are you talking about the horror movie remake? No, no, the actual trip video. Okay. Because yeah. I know you guys did a horror movie remake. I don't know why, but... Um, I think I did that because I was messing around with... Daniel, what's your some YouTube of the... channel? It's just my... It's if you search my name and then Jorda Tech, and then you search Jorda Tech, it should come up. Um, I think I made that horror version because I was playing around with some of the sound effects for a project. I don't remember what it was that we were working on. And I was like... And that was more, mostly just like to try stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like, if I had known we were going to become a vlog YouTuber, uh, what do we call those now? Influencers? <laughs> I think so you're an influencer now. You have a podcast. I am. Um, uh, you know what? For all the, uh, you know what? People do actually, my YouTube channel, it's not a, it's not a huge success, but there's, there's a, you know, a non-insignificant number of views on several videos. The Quick Lane Hall trip? Uh, that one was great that? as well. That, that one great. is so That's funny. Good. It's just Steven. Yeah, it's a lot of Steven. Steven's got a great I mentioned it maybe he was on the podcast or some other time. He's got I think it was on the podcast. He had a great uh he was great I figured which I think it was the Clemson trip one. If you just like the first, within the first couple minutes. The one in twenty nineteen, right? Yeah, I, I when we went you know, to Dev Valley and Jeff. Anish has studied my uh has studied my YouTube channel. He's got all the uh Dude, uh, I was in some of those too. You could barely like You are in some. 
I think, yeah, John's, John's definitely in some of them. I don't remember which ones. It's like, I, 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 was, I was the background guy most of the time, anyway. But, yeah, no, Rachel and Steven being features in that one was pretty cool. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the women's basketball one. Yeah, because that, cause that, I think I got a reminder from, like, the... Uh, the photos that I took, or the videos I took, where it was like, you know, six, you know, with Google would be like, this happened six years ago. I was like, oh, oh, oh yeah. shoot. That was, Feels bad. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. The, Does uh, it make you feel old? Old. Okay, good. I am. I am. You can Even see a I baby Elizabeth. Work, yeah. And I'm like old, and then nobody gets it, so I just say it to myself. Aww. The, I like how the Clemson 2019 video opens with um, Austin being like, what do I say? No, I don't want to be in the video. Oh, <laughs> and he's in the video. Ironic. He's definitely in the video. He's in, the, he's in a couple of his shots. Uh, he's sitting right behind yeah. him. Maybe he's next to him. I don't remember. He's <laughs> is it two-party right consent? Is it two-party consent state? What, what's the law? Yeah. yeah. Can he go back? I don't know. We were in South Carolina. Uh, it's it's in Georgia, so that could, could be anything. It's also YouTube. I'm pretty sure they don't give a shit unless some big YouTuber really wants to copyright claim, in which case then, yeah, they actually bother. Yeah, I don't think Austin's going to copyright claim me. Um, he might. Well, he's really make, camera shy. Make sure, yeah, well, make sure you watch to the end on all of them because there's usually a Tanner post credit scene. So. <laughs> what is this? The, uh, DC, the, the Daniel Cinematic Universe? Yeah, well, if Tanner wasn't in the actual one, even I, I, even in the ones he is in, I think we still put a little post. Nah, it's, it's it's still the MCU. It's the GTMCU, the Georgia Tech Marching Cinematic Universe. <laughs> we never did anything with those post credits. Maybe we should have done. We should have had it scripted out. But I didn't do it. You know, the vlogs were kind of just whenever we would go on the trips. So it wasn't like a I knew, you know, over however three or four years, uh, probably two or three maybe is what I was doing. So. I would be like, well, how come you never did one in a home game? And then I realized, oh, wait, we were in the tunnel. And also, like, you can't record our performances unless you got a GoPro. Yeah. Speaking of GoPro. That... Go ahead. Uh, one of the facts is Dan- Daniel Nguyen has a YouTube channel where he posts GoPro footage from games. Um, so, like, POV in the block, POV uh, in the, on the field for, like, pregame or halftime. I think he edits out the tunnel stuff. But he has, he has some cool stuff there. Stuff from Marching Band, stuff from when he's doing, like, Civil War reenactments. Go check it out. Go subscribe. Um, uh, John, how do you feel? About what? Just anything. Everything? Anything? I feel well, pretty we started good. Out how, do with, how do you feel about everything, Daniel? Well, well, we started out with um, Anoush has some heartbeat issues, and Elizabeth has some, uh, I don't know, some kind of maybe bronchitis issues. Um, so what <laughs> kind of medical condition are you dealing with? Everyone apparently has one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure. You have to have something. Probably malnutrition. I'm eating like shit now. <laughs> malnutrition? Not eating junk. Food. No, not malnutrition. Sorry, bad diet. <laughs> I've been getting into fast food <laughs> over here. I'll say malnutrition. I'm putting a little weight. Not too much. Not too much. A little bit. Okay. Uh, maybe you should see a doctor. Yeah, maybe I should. Maybe, maybe just, I should wait a few more years. Yeah. Maybe I should wait a few just more so medical school. To see myself in my, uh, yeah. Examine oh, yeah, I'm med school, man. It's going all right. When do you match? Oh, but. What's up? When do you match? Uh, really, it'll be a year or so. Or oh, what, a year and a half or so? I'm in year two right now. So have you started? Well, actually, rotations? no, no. Uh, the actual match will be uh, fourth year, yeah. So, uh, not yet. I mean, rotations, yeah. That'll be like six months or so. Okay. Yeah. So you're so done with one. school, like pedagogy, right? Not yet. 
still got to yeah. do a few more tests and then take step one. Yeah, you got to take step then one. Then I'll be then you match. rotations. That'll be the more fun part because this stuff gets old. I'll tell you that. All these PhDs trying to cram stuff down our throats that we'll never use. Isn't that what undergrad is? Yeah, but this is like undergrad, but worse. <laughs> Anyway, we're all getting through it, though. We're all getting through it. A lot of cool people here. Good. That sounds awful. Are you at Medical College of Georgia or a different one? Or uh, No, I'm in Mercer, Mercer Med School. They just opened oh, a new branch of uh, Columbus. I'm in Columbus now. Oh, Wait, that's so you're nice. in the North Georgia Mountains-ish, right? No, mm-hmm. I'm, like, middle of the state. Columbus what is? is like. Columbus? Columbus is like right on the border with Alabama, kind of like middle of the yeah. state. So yeah, it's like 15, 15 minutes from the borders where I live, yeah. I think I'm thinking of Cleveland. Georgia. Cleveland is in North Georgia, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking of Cleveland. Or it's in Ohio. Yeah, That's I'm probably thinking fact. of Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> yeah, or Ohio, yeah. At least they're not Detroit? Columbus, <laughs> Ohio is up pretty far north, too, yeah. Yeah, you're thinking of Columbus, Ohio. You're thinking of Ohio. <laughs> you're just in the wrong state. No, I was thinking of Brass on Bald. I know what I was. No, it's pronounced yeah. Cincinnati. Oh, God. <laughs> it could be worse. You could be in Correct Detroit. Correct me up. I have, a, I have a friend from Cleveland. Uh, she lives in New Hampshire now. But from we used Cleveland, to Georgia, from... or Cleveland, Ohio? Ohio. No, like Ohio property. Uh, I know, I'm genuinely confused now. I don't. Yeah, I'm um, lost. So she's from Cleveland, um, but one of the first things she showed me was this uh, hastily made Cleveland tourism video. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. I can't say that I have. Oh, my God. you got to check it out. It's so good. <gasps> oh, there's a train going by. I'm, like, right next to the railroad. Very exciting. Is it your first train ever? No, is it, been is it Amtrak? Trains. Yeah, there's Amtrak, but I think this one's great. Uh, yeah. It's weird because, like, in like we kind of get, like, D.C., we get the Amtrak, you get the metro train sometimes on the same, on the on the tracks, like, visible traffic, and then you just, like, randomly get freight as well. In Georgia, on the other hand, it's mostly freight. Yeah. There's an Amtrak station just down the, the road from me, so... Like Atlanta has through. exactly one Amtrak service. It's crazy. Can you believe it's that? crazy to me because it's Atlanta, right? And then Australia. my like current town, which is much much smaller than Atlanta, uh, mm-hmm. has the exact same number of Amtrak stations. Granted, there's only like one platform. I don't know about yeah. the Atlanta one, but yeah, no, it's the same. Okay, so if you're traveling down I-85 South um, towards towards the connector, um, and you pass um, right before the confluence of 75 and 85, you can actually uh-huh. see the Amtrak station, the Peachtree station. Or well, actually, no, it's, I don't think it's called Peachtree. I think it's actually just called Atlanta. And it's like the little house, and then you can see the st- and you can see the platform from the street. Oh. I think that's cool. Well, there you go. The more you know. So, John, I was in Chattanooga, or not Chattanooga. I don't know why I said that. Um, oh, I know why I said it. I know why I said it. I was in Columbus a couple years ago, and I went, like, down, like, the little whitewater rafting on the Chattahoochee. That was why I said Chattanooga, because oh, yeah? I was thinking about Chattahoochee. And it's actually pretty fun if you ever, like, you know, have free time and you're a busy doctor. Learning I keep schedule. hearing that it's fun. Yeah, I I still haven't gone, and I've been here a few years, so it's like, yeah, I need to, I need to check it out. There was also there a, a few brewery different. That I like oh yeah, yeah, I saw a few of those called, around here. Called Chattabruchi. Chattabruchi, like, yeah. Chattabruchi like, lives rent yeah. free in my head. It's such a and there was like yeah, a it's such a goofy on logo. On the, like the logo, yeah. it was so cute. Is it like actually like a craft brewery? Yeah. yeah, they have a lot of craft breweries around here. I think, uh, right. I don't know if this is the main one for uh, Scofflaw. I make a lot of IPAs. Those are good. I don't know if that's oh, a chain, man. though. Is that is that a chain or is that a one-city thing? 
I feel like Scofflaw you know? might be a chain. I think that I've heard okay. that there's one in Asheville as well for Scofflaw. Uh, okay. Tentatively. Yeah, I like their Don't stuff too, though, yeah. Maybe it's in a lot of good restaurants. Let me look it up. What else do you uh, have to do over here? Or were you not here for very long? I was just down for like the afternoon, so I was like, Oh, okay. Went whitewater raft. Like the purpose of the trip was like down from like campus to like whitewater raft because one of the friends that I went with was like from Columbus, and so we like went down there to do the raft, had lunch with his parents, and then went to the brewery and then came home. Okay. Which thing? Which option did you pick at the uh, uh, whitewater rafting? Because I, I heard they're they're like huge rafts for like whatever. Aren't they like for eight people or something? Or they're like canoes for a few people. Also, don't yeah, you have to have a special, like, certification if you want to go on a specific rapid? I don't know about that. I think you might if you're, like, whitewater kayaking. But we were, like, oh, I said canoeing, like, yeah, kayaking. Was that what you did, kayaking? We we were in, like, the big boat for, like, multiple people. Oh, like, Although, like eight people or were, something? Yeah, I think that there were six. Uh, okay five or six of us and so i think they actually like let us go down with only the six of us five or six and then um the guide so like we had a guide so that's like why we could just do it yeah there's also a mm-hmm. soft law in atlanta columbus our story oh, okay Where maybe it's just from? a georgia thing then yeah it looks like it started in atlanta that? and then expanded yeah, maybe that's why I saw that so much up there in those uh, stores. Maybe that's why I saw that so much, like at Publix and stuff. Yeah. Cool. So, so is, it, is it only in Georgia? It looks like it might only be in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was a pretty local thing, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Well, it is Chad Brucci, so that makes sense. <laughs> I mean. You know, it looks like there's two locations in Atlanta. Up here, it would have to be something I'm like. In Columbus. Uh, Shannon something. I can't think of it. Something oh, yeah, I meant to ask. How long did that? Shenandoah. Yeah, Shenandoah. <laughs> or, um, it would have to be something to do with Shen- the Shenandoah or Potomac Rivers. How long did that ride last you, by the way? It's like a 30-minute sort of thing? or? Yeah, I feel, I feel like it was like 30 minutes. Okay. I'm trying to remember Pretty- now. It wasn't too expensive, like, right? I think it was like 30, 40 bucks from what I heard. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like it was okay. like 30 minutes to it. I feel like it has to do with the um, flow rate of the river. Oh, uh, yeah. Because they have a set path. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah, I'll have to check it out with some friends sometime then. Um, oh, rafting. Sorry. So I'm I sorry. didn't. I've never actually gone whitewater rafting up in Shenandoah, but uh, whitewater tubing up here is actually pretty cool too. If you ever get a chance to do that, tubing. Yeah, oh, whitewater rafting. tubing. You can go whitewater tubing. But tell me more. Are you going down like class three rapids in an inner tube? I don't know if it was class three. It was at least class. Two. It was probably cl- actually. Yeah, I think it was around class two, class three. <clears throat> so That's it was B. My friend from Cleveland, um, another friend from Georgia Tech, and then another guy that my friend from Cleveland and I met while we were uh, from the same company um, that the two of us work for. And uh, we decided we would go up to uh, West Virginia, um, and we would go uh, whitewater tubing. And uh, they also have a ropes course, so that's something we want to do at some point. Which we still got to figure out how the hell we're going to do that. And then we just got pizza afterwards. So, But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. We were going – it it was supposed to, I think, take like an hour, but it ended up taking like a good couple of hours because, like, I never – this was like our first time tubing. And then there are some cool places to see, but, like, the we, we really just wanted to, like, catch the rapids, which, like – Piloting a tube down the river is not fun. It's it's no. actually very hard. 
I can imagine. I did um like shoot the hooch a bunch of times. Yeah. And that was like What is that? It's it's where you just like inner tube down the Chattahoochee. Oh, what is that sounds like a drinking game or something. You can make it a careful game. Careful what you say here. I'm sure you, uh, we had people, like, at one point, one of my coworkers was like, yo, next time we go tubing, we should get, like, one of those tubes where we can actually just, like, bring drinks on it and just, like, have, like, one tube with the drinks on it and a bunch of, uh, attached to ours with a bunch of tweed or, like, with a canoe or a kayak, and we'll be fine. And then we'll just have the guy in the kayak pilot all of us down the, down the river. I love it. Sounds like that would be a hell of a time, huh? Yeah, no, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, you guys should check it out. If you get to do whitewater tubing, ten out of ten would recommend. Just saying. Okay. Well. So. Do your classes have to get, like, specialized now, John? Or, like, are you still, like, you take generic classes, but, like, not for, like, your specific trade that you think you want to do, and then you rotate, and then you get to, like, choose your, like, specialization? Oh, they, you you do a little bit of everything. There's no okay. specialization. You just go all yeah. the way through it, like, uh, like high school kind of, you know. You're, you're just – and then you kind of try to, I guess, volunteer, do research. Hopefully yeah. it kind of – points towards the direction you're trying to go and then you apply to a residency. It's like college squared, I guess. Yeah, I was about to say, you don't specialize until you get to residency. Yeah. You just try to kind of specialize like what you're gearing yourself towards and what you, you know, figure you like and what you're showing that you like by whatever kind of research and volunteering and all that kind of crap, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, speaking of volunteering, if you ever get a chance to go to Grady, go to Grady. Yeah. Yeah, that's supposed to be a good place. I know a few people who I think actually work there. Shama volunteered at Grady when she was still in med school before she uh, got a residency. Long, long way for me, though. Yeah. What, like an hour? It's okay here, though. Feed mom and Napson and whatever. Uh, yeah, it's like an hour and a half for me. I will say that I uh, had a hard time getting an apartment uh, when I first got accepted here, and for the first two weeks, I had to do a two and a half hour commute both ways Ooh, there no. to my parents' house, and I had to be at class at like eight in the morning. Is that no, two and a half hours away? Five every two morning. Huh? No, no, two and a half each way, like a four and a half, five hour round trip. Oh God. Yeah, oh, that sucked. No. I was happy to finally have a place. Now I'm like fifteen minutes away from the school, so that's a hell of a lot better. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm just kind of like, I'm just in shock. That's awful. I'm so glad that you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. I'm sure you were probably even more glad than I could ever imagine being. Yeah. That was not fun. Doing it in the middle of the day is one thing, but yeah, like getting up at five in the morning. I'm not a morning person. Yeah. I got through it, though. Got a pretty nice place now. I'm happy with it. Not a, which isn't like five hours away from. Yeah, I'm like 15 minutes out. It's not bad at all. I've gotten yeah. there in like 11 minutes before if I speed pretty bad. Uh-huh. Define pretty bad. Are we talking to 70, 80, and a 50, or are we talking about like 90 to 100? Uh, well, I'm not talking about that. The, the prior, the prior. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, to I'm not going to go over like. John, you mean going like 53 and a 50. Right? You mean like that? Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah that's that's like exactly. I can't get fined for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for I mean, the there is one road, road so where it, there's one little road that feels like it should be a 45 or so, you know, 45, 55, but they made it 35 because apparently they're just, you know, a couple houses, so it must be a residential area. And you'll see everyone just goes like 55 there, even though it's a 35. Well, now. 50 or 55. Even the cops will, without lights on or sirens or anything, they'll just be blasting down the road. How come no one gets citizens arrested? I don't know. You know Maybe because I mean. you're not there to arrest them, Anoush. I wouldn't. Gotta but beat them up. Seen, there's a 
So if, if you're wondering where that comes from, there's an Andy Griffith episode um, where Barney Fife is t- talking about like an illegal turn at an intersection, and it's like you can't, you're not allowed to do it. And if you see someone do it, you could do a citizen's arrest. And then Gomer Pyle actually like tries to arrest Barney for making that illegal turn. Same turn, yeah. I have not seen that. Yeah, I haven't seen Andy Griffith in forever. <laughs> That's they actually I have. That. He actually has a museum in North Carolina, Mount Airy. I've been to Mount Airy. I don't think we went to the museum though, but we like walked around. Go to the museum. Ten out of ten, we recommend. I've been there. I went to an art mu- museum yesterday. Uh huh. It's called the Clark Institute. It's in Williamston, Massachusetts. Uh huh. And uh, what was that like? It was cool. They had um, one of the, like, Washington portraits there, which I felt was, you know, appropriate for President's Day today. Nice. And then uh, they had a couple Monets, a Picasso, some Renoir. They had the Degas, like, ballerina statue, which I thought was really cool. And then there was a lot of, like, European and American art, which was just, like, portraits. And they were all kind of, like, unsettling. And I was like, wow. These are all probably haunted. Wouldn't want to be here at night. But, I don't know. It was nice. I wonder if they got a ghost tour. (laughs) I would not be volunteering for that. Well. Scared of ghosts? Yeah. I I don't want to meet one. I think that they're real, and I'm not You believe in them? I think. What kind? I see. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I. They're like vampires, right? Like. All these different interpretations. In some ways, like, way, are you? Like are there like malevolent ghosts, or that she like? Or what about what if you met a friendly ghost, like a Casper or something? But <laughs> what if the ghost was not friendly? You know, yeah. Well, what's your like what kind of ghost around? do you think you'd be more likely to meet? Well, I'm just saying, if it's like some angry-looking Victorian child in the picture, like that's not going to be a happy ghost. They're going to be yeah. like, sickly and mad. But what would they? What would that existence entail, though? They're just gonna sit around in your basement every like for centuries, just wait for someone to go down there and go. Ooh, and oh, they go back your and like what? What is the life of a ghost? Are they trapped there? I mean, there's so many they different interpretations. Are, clearly, they have to work from home. If they're getting a job, they they're getting a job. They're working from home. They're basement dwellers. Yeah, they're yeah, neat. I feel. I feel like in my brain, they're kind of like a like mischievous poltergeist from like. You know, like Tuck and like Midsummer Night's Dream or something like that. I don't I know. I thought you were about to say Pete from Harry <laughs> Potter for a minute. You know that? <laughs> yeah. Moaning Myrtle. Well, Moaning Myrtle is not exactly a vengeful spirit. She does have a playful side, but like her story is apparently kind of tragic. Like she just. Literally just stayed at Hogwarts so she could basically torment this one with this one girl after she got killed by the Basilisk. I think is that what the story is? I forget. I remember probably something like that. All I remember is the uh, that one. What's that one sketch comedian on a uh, YouTube said? Uh, like he was role playing his Harry or something. He said uh, before I before I met her, she was just regular Myrtle. Oh God! Oh, oh okay. yeah. I don't know what I, feel I don't like, know what uh, talking uh, about, but I, but the joke was uh, I was uh, more commenting on the joke. I I think that she stayed so that nobody else would open the chamber. Well, that didn't work out so well. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like in the books they like made her more against Harry opening the Chamber of Secrets and like in the movie. Wasn't there something about her being bullied or something too? Like being ugly All and like Hornsby, flipped onto right? Yeah, she was like bullied and that's why she was hiding in the in the bathroom. In the bathroom. When, in the bathroom. Then the bathroom yeah. got let out. Yeah, yeah. All, all of Hornsby. That's why I was like, is that why she became a ghost? Is to like basically like torment this girl that was bullying her. Maybe. Harry Potter does have interesting, like, 
interpretation of ghosts. I don't think any other form of media has ever interpreted them that way. Like, what, what is it they, they're choosing consciously to be in a form of purgatory, never be able to reach Remain death. Remain attached to a place kind of like what, the, what it is, right? Yeah. Well, something about having a choice that I don't know. I always thought that was an interesting interpretation there. I mean, it makes sense if you think – well, it makes sense when I think about it, just in the sense of, like, when you um, when you die, one of the things you well, – at least in, in culturally that we do is – the reason we cremate is to basically terminate all attachment to, the, to, the, to, the, to this world so that the soul can move on. And clearly, sure. if you're a ghost, that doesn't exactly happen. Well, so I see, what do you, do you or involuntarily. Right. Do you believe in um, other supernatural stuff? Other spirits, vampires, magic with a K? Uh, it depends. I gotta go on a case by case basis. Um, I can't. What? I can't enumerate all of that here, but I mean, you there's can't. You can't. there's energies out there. And they probably manifest in different forms, whether it's a ghost or a vampire or whatever. It's just, that's all it is. It's just a negative energy or it might even be a positive energy, but it's just an energy and it's out there. It exists. And how you interpret it is uh, just kind of based on how you experience it or just how it relates to you. What about you, Elizabeth? I feel like, you know, like, fantasy novels where, like, things are, like, happy and there's, like, fairies and sprites and, like, wood nymphs and it's just kind of, like, lovely. I would like to believe in, like, that kind of magic, that, like, it exists in the world, but I feel like it's all... You only believe in the dark stuff? I Well, maybe not even the dark stuff. I just, like, I don't really want to believe in the dark stuff, that, like, that that might be out there. Um, But you do, though? I feel like it's kind of... Like, energies rooted in folklore and history getting twisted yeah. about, you know, people just seeing things and it maybe not necessarily being exactly like what they saw. So. <laughs> probably not. But I think it would be really cool if there were, like, you know, ley lines actually were, like, magical points of connection between multiple planes of existence, but I mean, I feel like you can't really rule stuff like that out. What do you think are some of the most, like, uh, avant-garde things you believe in that, like, most people wouldn't? Anything come to mind? Uh, Anything, like, wacky off the wall? I don't know. I'm, like, trying to think. I'm, like, definitely not, like, a like, big, like, Nessie or, like, Bigfoot believer or something like that. Oh, right, right. I mean, are we crossing the tail? Like, where do we cross? Like, what, is this a ghost story? Is it an urban legend? Like, what are we talking oh, about? Oh, anything, anything. Conspiracy theories, whatever you want. Conspiracy hey, you theories. too, dude. What do you think? Do y'all have any? I can't I'm say not a very sure. spiritual person. I was like, I can't, I don't know about conspiracy theories, but I mean, I am, I consider myself a spiritual person, so like, where, where the energies exist and where we could, where I can tap into the positive energy in any way I can, and that's one of the things, like, I kind of picked that up from my mom. I really picked that up from my mom and her dad. Is that based in religion? Yeah. Which religion is that? Would that be Hindu or? Okay, okay. You believe, uh, does that involve um, reincarnation? Yeah. Oh, okay. What 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 tenets does it have? Like, what ways does it make you want to live life for the best outcome? I mean, it's less of an organized religion than it is a way of life, but just like the number of ways we worship God in different ways, in like different uh-huh. forms. So if you ever if if someone ever told you that Hinduism is like polytheistic, I mean. They're right and they're wrong. Like, it's, they're right in the sense that, yeah, it's, we worship God, but, like, multiple gods, but 
they're wrong in the sense that we worship that really what it is is it's just God in different forms. So yeah. like more like a loose from, philosophy though. From there, like you get into some of like the mm, yeah, but like just just like the spirituality of just like living everyday life and just doing your your duty and also like um just treating people with respect and stuff like that it really, like this yeah. it's like that's where like the more of that tolerance comes from is just like listen we worship God in different ways like other religions have their own thing but like it makes sense so Stuff like that. Sure. Well, you and, treat people right. You're following yeah, it. Of course. It's the best of my mind. And just like, you do your, do you, like, even if it's not like you're, you're making some big change in, in, in the world, even like as long as you're doing right by whoever you need to do right by yourself, your family, stuff like that. And just as long as you put good out in the world, you get good back or you put that evil out yeah, in the world, you like get karma. good back. Stuff like that. Yeah, of course. That's like that's foundational practically. Yeah. And then the whole thing of reincarnation is like if you it's like if you put out put good out in the world, like you get good in your next life. If you put evil out in the world and you get evil in your next life, you experience it and it's just like it's not fun. And then the end game is to break out of obviously the end game then is like you break out of the cycle, you end your attachment to this, like, mortal world, or, or what you, we consider, like, this illusory world, in, in a sense. Like, if you ever watch The Matrix. Is it like, well, is it like Buddhism, kind of, like, Nirvana, that whole concept? You're trying to work your way up to a... In a different way. Oh, okay. In a different way. Dang, Daniel might have died. I haven't heard him no, for no, I, think he's being, uh, I think he's just taking it all in. It's okay. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. he has a comment on what he Daniel. believes in poltergeists. Tell us about your spirituality, Daniel, oh. yeah. Well, that's it for the show this week, guys. Thanks for coming <laughs> on. <laughs> what is this? The Bill Nye, the science guy? What a cop-out. What a cop-out. We're not even <laughs> an hour yet. You said an hour. <laughs> I owe you guys an hour? Is that how this works? Well, no, you said yeah. we owe you an hour. Oh, that's right. Well, you know, it's, well, it's we're almost yeah, well, well, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, well. All right, give us another topic then, host. <laughs> no. Yeah, pick a game or something. Let's play this or that. Yeah, you want us to do all this work for you? All this work for like, me? If this isn't the experience for someone else, this is the experience for someone else, and I'm just here for the ride. It's like throwing Burn. a party and then having all your guests put all the decorations up and make all the food <laughs> and everything and just sitting around in your house. And then you're like, look what I did. Isn't that basically yeah. what a potluck party is, though? I mean, if you... oh. Nah, not if you're a host. Really questions. At least if you host, you provide yeah, the you infrastructure any... and, the, and the room and the board and the whatever. Well, I guess so. Maybe not all the food, but like a good chunk of it. So have you added a bunch to that uh, list of special questions? No, it looks like I haven't updated this since last July. So Dang. I thought you would have added some. Well, Yo, I'm not that uh, very creative. John, did I ever tell you we did this with Julia? The game? We did, we did mm-hmm. the game with Julia Burke. Huh? I don't know how much she liked it, but uh, we did it with her. I mean, we learned things. We learned how cool she was. It was a fun episode. Hope to do it again sometime. Well, is there anything else you guys were were burning? (coughs) uh, Or any burning questions or topics you needed to to, to discuss that didn't involve me? Dang, I really put a damper on things with the spirituality (laughs) question. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. Damn, Maybe I didn't mean to rain on your parade. <laughs> what's what's question anything? number 69? What's question number ah. 69 in that doc? We'll just answer that and we'll call it quits. All right, let me find it.
I don't think I made it anything uh-huh. special. Nice. Uh, it's not anything special. Well, do you use straws? Do you use straws? I used to hate them, but I'm okay with them now because it keeps me from dumping ice on my face at a diner. Amen to that. Yeah. Um. I like when I get Taco Bell. I'll usually just like, hey, can I get a glass of water from the drive-through? And that's they'll give me the straw. And yeah, hell yeah, I'll use the straw. So. Well, I'm Daniel. Are you a straw believer? Straw believer? What about Elizabeth first? Do you feel spiritual about straws? Are you one with the straw? I really like my reusable straw. Nice. Oh, yeah, me too. Is it a metal one or a silicone one? I have a silicone one. Okay. I have a weird one. It's a metal one. Paper one. Wait, how long are those last? Yeah, well, it only lasts one time, so it's not very, it's not very reusable. Yeah, I would think, why'd you say a reusable paper straw? <laughs> it's just, it's know, really, no, it's really hard. California. Holding on. Are you getting fiber when it breaks down the second time you use it, or are you just like swallowing it's it? Really, it, it really, it really is struggling to hold on. Basically, then once it's done, you <laughs> kind of melt it down, you mold it back up, and you can reform it. It's a whole project. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Plastic is whole, yeah. Basically, yeah. I don't know. Dude, you're going to single handedly save the environment doing that shit. A little straw factory in my, my place. <laughs>